So over the last couple lectures, we've really focused on how do we fix states so that we can find specific internal energy. We want to do that because it helps us out when we're solving the first law for closed systems. Welcome back to Thermodynamics. Today, we're going to do a large example where we fix several different states. So the example can be found on my courses if you look at the starter sheet. But the question goes like this. You have just started a new co-op job at a nuclear power plant east of Rochester, New York. Your supervisor recently completed a number of thermodynamic measurements at the plant as preparation for an upcoming maintenance program. Your supervisor has asked you to complete the thermal property information from the measurements. You are to supply the information and sketch the points on a PV and a TV diagram. So you're given a list of known information for states 1 all the way up to state 6. So we're going to fix all of these states today. We know that the working fluid in all cases is water. We're familiar with most of the properties on this list, but here at state 6 we have a little h, which is enthalpy. Now, we don't need to know too much about enthalpy yet. It's more important when we start to look at open systems. But here, it's another property that we can find on our tables. So we'll use enthalpy in lots of problems in this course. It has the same units as specific internal energy, kilojoules per kilogram, so it is an intensive measure of energy. And because it's an intensive measurement, we can find it on our thermodynamic tables. Specific enthalpy, H, at a given state, is defined as the specific internal energy plus the pressure multiplied by the specific volume. It does make sense to think of enthalpy as its own property, even though it's a combination of these other intensive properties. But since once we fix the state, we know all of these intensive properties anyway, instead of looking each one of them up on a table, we combine them together to get enthalpy. This is particularly useful when we start looking at open systems. But it is important to remember that enthalpy is not an independent property from specific internal energy. So as we move through this problem, we're going to plot the data from these six states on a PV diagram and on a TV diagram. Here is a schematic of our PV diagram. Like we've seen before, this plot has a vapor dome. We know that the blue line is the saturated liquid line and the red line is the saturated vapor line. We have pressure on the vertical axis and specific volume on the horizontal axis. Our TV diagram has temperature on the vertical axis and again, specific volume on the horizontal axis. But here, we also see a vapor dome. It's just the shape is a little bit different because the location of these saturated vapor and saturated liquid lines are in a bit of a different place. One of the things that will become very important as we move through these thermodynamic problems is to develop a state table. So a state table is a table where we put our state information. I think this is really important, particularly as we get into longer problems in this class, because it's sort of a repository for information. So we can put the information that we know here, and as we start to learn more about each state point, we can fill in the rest of the table. Once the table is complete, we know that we've fixed all the states. And we don't have to do it in this problem, but often once we've fixed all the states, then we go back to some kind of a first law analysis. So, through the magic of PowerPoint, I've been able to fill in all the known information about each one of these states. The thing that I like about putting this data on this table is that I can see where I know enough information to fix the state. Because we know to fix a state, we need two independent intensive properties. And that's what we have at each state, at least provided that the intensive properties we have are independent. So we'll work through each one of these states, we'll go through and fix it, and we'll find the specific internal energy. One of the things we're typically going to do in our solution process is write down our assumptions. Now in this case, I've written down some assumptions that you might have to make 
in a different problem. But in this case, because we're only going to fix states, we won't need to do this But in this problem, we won't actually be doing more than fixing the states. So a lot of these assumptions are just kind of examples that you might see later on. So if we're trying to find the work for a process, we would need to know the volume and pressure relationships. In some cases, we would have a simple process where there's no work. If we had a closed system, we would have no change in mass. If we were using the first law, we would need to know something about the change in kinetic energy, potential energy, and spring energy. And typically in these first law type problems, these things will be negligible. But in this case, we're only fixing states. So we really don't have to make any of the assumptions. I guess the only assumption that we are making is that we can approximate all of these state values or the values of our properties by linearly interpolating between known points. So let's look at state one. We look at the state table and we're told the temperature and the pressure. So I don't know where we're going to be on our phase diagram here or our TV diagram. I don't know if we're going to be subcooled liquid, superheated vapor, or if we're going to be under the vapor dome. So the first thing that I always do is ask myself, is it a two-phase mixture? Because if it's not a two-phase mixture, I can usually figure out, based on where our data is, if we're over here for a superheated vapor, or if we're down here for a subcooled liquid. So in this case, our temperature is too high to be on table A2. So that means the temperature is above the critical temperature. Right, so the last row in table A2 for water is 374.14 degrees. Now our temperature is higher than that, so we know that we can't have a two-phase mixture at equilibrium. So we know we're not on table A2. So I know that I'm not under the vapor dome, but I don't know if I'm left of the vapor dome or right of the vapor dome. So in order to find that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the pressure information that we have as well. So here I know that my pressure is 80 bar. And if my pressure is 80 bar, then my saturation temperature or the temperature that water will boil at is 295 degrees. So here I know that my pressure is 80 bar and my temperature is or at least the temperature that water boils at is 295 and my temperature is much bigger than that. So my temperature is 460 degrees, which is larger than T sat. So state one must be superheated vapor. That means that the temperature is above the boiling temperature. So the, just like, let's say this was water and we were at one atmosphere and my temperature was above the boiling point, which is hundred degrees Celsius, then I know that I would have steam. So in this case, the boiling is fully complete and there's no water left in our system. So we'll go to table A4 for superheated vapors. So if I'm drawing this, I'm in the red region here. So now I look on table A4 and I try to find a table that's nested in A4 where the pressure is 80 bar. And then I'm hoping that I have a line or a row on my table that coincides with my temperature T1. In this case, I don't, so I'll have to do some linear interpolation. But the good news is 460 degrees is right in between 440 and 480. So here I know that I can calculate my interpolation factor A, and I can see that A is going to be 0.5. So I could use this interpolation factor to find all the information from this state, from specific volume, specific internal energy, specific enthalpy, and specific entropy. So now that I have values for U min, U max, and my interpolation factor A, I can put those into my equation, and I find that U1 is 2,986 kilojoules per kilogram. I can use this same formula with the same interpolation factor to find the specific volume, the specific enthalpy, 
and the specific entropy if I wanted to do that, although it's not on my table here. So I've decided not to do that. So here I'm filling in my table. It asks me for my quality, but quality doesn't make sense when we're not under the vapor dome. So here I've just made a note to myself that this was superheated vapor. I put in my value for specific volume, for specific internal energy, and for specific enthalpy. And I remind myself that I got this information off table A4. Now, before I get to solving state two, I want to plot state one on my PV and TV diagrams. So here, my PV diagram is a little bit straightforward because I know I have my pressure and I know my specific volume. So now that I know those two points or those two data points, I can find lines for both of those on my graph and I put a point down. So that's my state one. I know my temperature and I also know my specific volume. So I can plot those on my TV diagram as well. Now I'm going to go through and look at state two. For state two, I know the pressure and I know the quality. And because I know quality, I know this has to be a two phase mixture. So let's solve this state two. So is it a two phase mixture? Yes, because I know the quality. Although I also know because it's a two phase mixture with a very high quality, it's going to be very close to the saturated vapor line. So I'm going to look on table A3 because I know the pressure. My pressure is seven bar. So I find the row for seven bar. And I know that the quality is high. So I, if, I, if I was asked for the temperature, and I think it's on my state table, so I could fill this out as well, I see that at 7 bar, we start to change phase, or we start to boil water at 165 degrees. So I know that. But what about the other properties? I'm going to use quality to find specific volume, in specific internal energy, and specific enthalpy. So I can use my quality equation for each one of these different properties. I'm using Z as a stand-in for V, for U, for H, and even for little s if I wanted to do that too. So if I want to find the specific volume, I have to remember when I do specific volume that here the specific volume has been multiplied by a thousand already. So to get the true value of V sub F, I have to divide by a thousand. So here V2 at the quality that I have is going to be VF plus X times VG minus VF. I have all that information from the table and I know that my quality is very high and I find that V2 is equal to 0.27. Now this is expected because all of these values should be very close to the saturated vapor value. So V2 is almost equal to VG because X is approximately one. I can do the same thing for UF and UG. So here I can find the specific internal energy that's associated with this quality. And I get that it's 2,539, which is essentially VG, or at least very close. Now, remember that the equation looks a little bit different. The textbook helps us out when we use enthalpy because they give us this value HFG. And HFG is already HG minus HF. So it's one less thing that I have to put into my calculator. And if I do that, I find that H2 at my quality of 98 point something or 0.98 something is 2,727 kilojoules per kilogram. So now I have all this information for state two. I just have to plot it on my graphs. So on the PV diagram, I know the pressure and I know the quality. The quality is almost 100, or almost 1. So here, we're going to put our state point just outside the, or I guess just inside the vapor dome beside the saturated vapor line. I do the same thing. Now I know the temperature because it's the saturation temperature for the given pressure. And I know again that the quality is very close to 1, so I put my state point here. So now I've drawn this state as well. Now we can move on to state three, where we know the temperature and the pressure. This, the temperature is pretty similar to state one, but the pressure is much lower. 
So let's see what happens here. We'll follow the same process that we did for state one. So here, I'm just going to assume that I'm a superheated vapor because that's what I was for state one. In this case, because we're seven bar, it tells me that the saturation temperature, that's what this says. It tells me the saturation or the pressure that I'm interested in is seven bar. And it says at that pressure, the saturation temperature is just under 165 degrees. Since our temperature is above that, we know that we are a superheated vapor. Our temperature is 440 degrees. That's on my table down here. So I have a row and I don't even have to interpolate. So this one's fairly straightforward. I can just write down the values for specific volume, specific internal energy, and specific enthalpy. Again, I put that information into my state table. I want to draw these states too. I know the pressure. It's much lower than we were at before. And I know the specific volume because I read that off the table. So I can put a point on my PV diagram. I can do the same on my TV diagram. And notice that even though this is true for all of our cases, that even though these points are not in the same place on these two graphs, they're both in the same region. So they're both in the superheated vapor region. They're above the red line and they're to the right of the critical point. So they're superheated vapor on both graphs. If you're ever plotting points like this on two different graphs and you get your point to be in different regions of the graph, then something is definitely wrong. So we're halfway through. We'll look at state four where we know the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. And again, we have quality. So this will be a lot like state two, except now we know temperature instead of pressure. So we know we're under the vapor dome because quality is given. Now here, we're going to go to table A2 because we know the temperature and not the pressure. So the temperature is given, 40 degrees. It tells us that if we had a two-phase mixture at 40 degrees, then the pressure must be 0 0.07384 bar. I can find all of my properties using my quality equation. And since quality is already given, I've put that information in the calculations down here, I find that my specific volume is 18.3165. And that again makes sense. It's very close to the specific volume for the saturated vapor, which is because my quality is 0.9382. So it's very high. I do the same process for U4. Again, this is the same equation. It's just I'm changing out my little V's and putting in little u's. I get a value of 2,290 kilojoules per kilogram, which is again close to ug. And for h4, remember here the equation's a little bit different because the textbook tells us what hg minus hf is by giving us that extra column, hfg. I put that in and I find that h4 is 2,425.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Now I want to graph this point. So this will look like state two because we're still under the vapor dome and we're close to the saturated vapor line. But our pressure is lower. So that's here, right? We have a state point here. We do the same thing. Our temperature is lower than it was for state two. But again, we're just on the inside of the vapor dome here. When we look at state five, we have a quality equal to zero, and we're told that the temperature is 40 degrees. So this one, we have a choice. Because the quality is equal to zero, I could look at this as either saturated liquid and look on the two-phase table, or I could go to subcooled liquid in the first row on my subcooled liquid tables should be my saturated liquid. But because we have a lot more information on the two-phase tables, that's where I'm going to look. So here, it's a two-phase mixture. It's actually not a two-phase mixture because quality is zero. So that actually tells us that it's single phase, but it's a special case because it's right on the saturated liquid line. 
because x is equal to zero. But my life is easier if I use my two phase tables and just take the values that have subscript f. So here I have a row for my temperature is 40 degrees. It still has that same pressure that we saw before when we were at 40 degrees. And now I just take all the values that have subscripts f. Because here, if x is equal to zero, that's what my quality equation becomes. So here I can see that the saturated pressure is the pressure that's in the second column here. I know that V5 is just equal to Vf, U5 is equal to Uf, and H5 is equal to Hf. So I just pull those numbers right off the, off the table. I don't even have to put anything into my calculator. I'm almost ready to start my last state. But before I do that, I have to fix these points on my graphs. So again, we have this low pressure, but here we're right on our blue line, so our saturated liquid line. We do the same thing here. We have a low temperature and we're on the saturated liquid line. Now I can start my last state. I know that the pressure is 80 bar, but H is pretty low at 181.94 kilojoules per kilogram. So we have a pressure, but we also have an enthalpy. So how do we fix the state? Again, I'm going to tell you that if you're not exactly sure how to fix the state, it's probably best to assume that you have a two-phase mixture because even if you're wrong, you'll see whether or not you're saturated liquid or saturated vapor. Maybe you're already starting to develop some engineering intuition here and you see that because we have a low value of H that you're expecting it to either have a very low quality or to be a saturated liquid or maybe even a subgold liquid. So let's see. So 80 bar is on the table here and that's good, but we see that our enthalpy for saturated liquid. So I know if this was a two phase mixture, enthalpy would have to be between 1,316.6 and 2,758. But HF is much lower, or our H value is much lower than that, right? So we have to see, are we in this range of H values here? And we're not. And because we're below that range, we have a number lower than HF. Here we see as quality increases, H also increases. And H would continue to increase if we increased the temperature in the superheated vapor region. So because we have a low value of H, we know that this must be a subcooled liquid. So this is saying the same thing, that H6 is below HF and it's not in between HF and HG, so I must be in the subcooled liquid region. So H6 is less than HF. If H6 was bigger than HG, then I would be over here in the superheated vapor region. But instead, I'm a subcooled liquid. So what do I do? I look for the right pressure, and now I'm going to try to fix the state. So we have a pressure of 80 bar, which is in between 75 bar and 100 bar. So we can see that the temperature will, between four, will be between 40 degrees and 80 degrees Celsius. That means we'll have to interpolate twice for all of these different properties. We really want to create our own table for these properties at pressure is equal to 80 bar. And then we could find the right temperature where H6 was equal to 181 0.95. Now maybe you're looking at this or, or maybe you just look at my little uh, frowny face over here and you realize that this is a lot of math. But we can still try to do this. We can see that our interpolation factor for pressure in between 75 bar and 100 bar because we're looking at 80 bar is going to be 5 over 25 or 0.2. So then for all of these properties we can go and find what the property would be if we had a table at 80 bar. So I'm going to make my own table here. So I know that my specific enthalpy has to be somewhere between 40 degrees and 80 degrees because it's got to be between 174 and 340, right? Because we're 180, I think. And it's got to be between 176 
and 342. So we're going to be between 40 degrees and 80 degrees. So I'm not going to make the whole table. I'm just going to make these two rows. So now I'm going to use this interpolation factor for all of these points. So I'm going to interpolate up between my specific volume data. And that's where this comes, right? So I'm going to take 20% of the difference and add it to these low values here. I'll do that for specific volume. I'll do that for specific internal energy. And I'll do that for specific enthalpy. Now I have my own table. And I see that what I need to do is I got to add some other row between 40 degrees and 80 degrees. And if I do that, right, I know that I have a low value here of 174.6, a high value of 341.2. That's the first interpolation that I did before. And my actual value is 181.95, somewhere in between there. So now I have to find another interpolation factor, B, using this information. So I take H6 minus H of 40 divided by H of 80 degrees minus H of 40 degrees. So I put that information here and I find that my interpolation factor B is 0 0.044. So if you were on a test, I would have probably encouraged you to stop here and just say, look, the temperature is going to be very close to this. It's less than 5% of the difference in the range. So maybe it's not worth my time to do the math. But I think here we're going to do the math anyway. So if I take that 0 0.44, 0 0.044, and I find the temperature difference. So I can do that with my interpolation. And I find that the temperature here is 41.76 degrees Celsius. I can put that in here. I do the same thing with my specific volume. So again, I'm interpolation, interpolating between these two numbers, which again are pretty close together. So I think just picking the data at 40 would probably be okay in many applications. So I put that in here. And then I would do the same thing for U going between 166.6 and 444, 5% of the difference, and that gives me 174.7. So now I have all the information that I need to fill in my state table. The last thing that I have to do is draw my last state point. So I know that I'm subcooled liquid. I know my pressure and I know my specific volume is very low. So it's over here. Notice that it's in the subcooled liquid region. And the same thing when I have the temperature and the specific volume. And again, I'm in the subcooled liquid region. So now I can go through and see if any of these things make sense. So all of the units that we found were in the correct units. We had specific volumes in meters cubed per kilogram. We had enthalpy and we had specific enthalpy and specific internal energies in kilojoules per kilogram. We drew out our state positions and they were in the right regions of the graph. So I don't know if I exactly put them in the right place, but at least they were in the right regions on my graph. And this last one's always a little bit tricky. Like, does it fit my intuition? Sure, I guess because of the other things. So if you haven't done a lot of these problems, you might not have developed a lot of intuition about these types of problems yet. But what we know is that we got the signs, every, the signs of everything was positive, which makes physical sense. The units were all right. And when we drew them on the graphs, they were all in reasonable places. So I can't show you that any of this is wrong, which is almost as good as being right. And that concludes another lecture for thermodynamics. See you again next time.